Welcome Calculus AB. This is video 2TW, Finding Limits Graphically and Numerically. The essential question is, what's a limit? Let's begin. So what is a limit? Now we're going to talk about this, but we're going to look at a few different graphs. And there's a bunch of different ways to explain what a limit is, but the way I'm going to word it right now is it's the number the graph is approaching. So let's take this example. I have this graph up here with this function f of x is x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1. And it looks like this with a hole there. Now, if I had this question for you, what is f of 0? Well, f of 0, that's where you plug in 0 for x. And if you did that, you know, an you just analyze that plugged in the number, you get 0 cubed minus 1 over 0 minus 1. So you get negative 1 over negative 1, which is just 1. Or you could just look at this graph and go, hey, where x is 0 happens right there. And f of 0, or y, is equal to 1. So that's the answer. Now I'm going to ask you a little differently. Well, f of x is getting close to 0. What is f of x getting close to as x approaches 0? So as this graph is going along this curve and it's getting close to 0, as it's getting close to 0 from both sides, what's getting close to? Well, it's still getting close to 0. So that's approaching. But let's look at a different point on this graph. Now, what is f of 1? So we're going to evaluate when x is 1 here. If I told you to plug in what's f of 1, well, you could plug in 1, you get 1 cubed minus 1 over 1 minus 1, and you would get 1 minus 1 over 0 over 0. Oh, that's undefined. So we, we don't, can't actually evaluate f of 1. But if I asked you a different question, you looking at this graph, and if you follow that curve, you're, getting, you're approaching this value for 1. You know it's at 3. Like you, you can see it. It's getting close, but there's actually a hole right there. So what is f of x getting close to as x approaches 1? Well, you can see that's 3. And from both directions, the graph is going up this way and down this way. And it's getting close to that 3. But when you get to that point, it doesn't actually get 3. It's undefined. So this is what we use limits for. It's, it's to see the number that's approaching. And sometimes, like that first example, you just plug it in to figure it out. But, but sometimes that's, we're asking something else. Let's take a different example. Well, let's go back to that one. We're actually use a table to evaluate. So maybe if you don't have a graph of that, but you can plot points that are really, really close to the number we're approaching. So for example, we tried to approach 1 last time. So I'm plotting points for x, you know, getting approaching 1. So 7,500, 7, it's all the way to 0.999, getting really, really close. And as you plug those in, you can see that f of x is just under 3, but it's getting really, really close. And from the other direction, it's going down to just above 3, but really, really close. So even though you can't evaluate it 1, you can see that both sides are approaching uh, 3. So an, uh, another way, let's talk about our notation for limits. So the limit, as it looks, notation looks like this. And the way we say that is the limit of f of x, the function, as x approaches 1 is 3. So the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 is 3. And this is our standard form notation where c is some number and l is some number. Those have to be some constant term. All right, so let's take a different example. This is, this is a piecewise function. So this is where the limits and evaluating the numbers are going to give you different results. So when f of x is always equals 1 when x does not equal 2, and it equals 0 when x does equal 2. So what happens, your graph is going to, f of, you know, graph of f of x equals 1 is just a straight line. But what happens at 2, you have an open hole at 1, and instead we go down to 0. So it's a straight line with a hole there where it drops down once. So if I asked you to find the limit as x approaches 2, so the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from both sides, it's approaching 1. But if you actually evaluate f of 2, your answer is going to be 0. So limits is, is not necessarily what it's going to evaluate if you plug it in, but it's what it approaches. So sometimes the limit doesn't exist. Let's take this example of the absolute value of x divided by x. So if you're graphing on the positive side of the x-axis, you have basically f of x equals 1. And on the negative side, you have f of x equals negative 1. Now, what's going to happen, at, so we, if I asked you to find the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x in this case, that doesn't exist. We can't find that because if you approach from the right, left-hand side, it goes to negative 1. But if you're going from the right-hand side, it's, it's approaching positive 1. So it's different from both sides, so this does not exist. Let's look at a different example. This also does not exist. 
So if I was trying to limit as x approaches 0 for this function, 1 over x squared, on the right-hand side, it's just going up forever. And then on the, le on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, it's going up forever. We basically have this asymptote right here. So the limit, it's, you could say it's going to infinity, but it's, you could say the limit is infinity. You might try to put that number, but we actually need a, a concrete number. Infinity doesn't work. So we say it does not exist because those are increasing forever. Another example where we do not exist is we have this um, weird oscillating behavior. So if you graph the function sine of, of 1 over x and you try to find the limit as x approaches 0, I pull out a graphing calculator and just plug in y equals 1 over x and see what happens. You'll, you should see something where the graph kind of goes really funky around this number, whereas as, as x is approaching 0 from both sides. So in this case, we actually don't have a limit as well. So to summarize all three of those things, when we don't have an existence of limits, happens when the right side and the left side approach different numbers. That was that first case. It also, when it increases or decreases without bound, basically infinity or negative infinity, as x approaches some number, or when it oscillates, which was with that sine function, where it just it's going crazy right there. All right, that is it.